My name is Greg Baron Gafford. I'm a research scientist and faculty with the School of Geography and Development and with Biosphere 2. And so the Mount Bigelow Observatory is one of a few stations that are part of something we call the Critical Zone Observatory. And the critical zone is a term that was um, developed not too long ago that focuses on the areas, the lower boundaries of the atmosphere. So think about, about as high up as you can see and are concerned with thinking about the air that you breathe, the water and the atmosphere that's circulating. It's important to understand how these forests are doing in terms of their, their health because 50 years from now, it's entirely possible that they might not be here for us to enjoy. When you want to look bigger and get a sense of how the collective ecosystem's doing, use a tower like we have here on the top of the mountain. And what it essentially is, is a, is a set of scaffolding, so just so you can get above the ecosystem. And we're measuring the eddies, or that turbulence in the air, just as you might think about eddies in a stream, those little swirls. Those actually the invisible swirls of air fly past our sensors, which are measuring carbon dioxide and water concentrations in the atmosphere. And by doing that on a daily basis, you essentially take a pulse of the ecosystem. You see the up and down movement of carbon dioxide levels. This system really is a big carbon sink. It's scrubbing a lot of carbon out of our atmosphere for us. You know, there's all, there's all these different sources of CO2 into the atmosphere from industry, from driving, from natural production of CO2 into the atmosphere. And that's one of the big services we're getting out of the, the forest of the Catalinas is a, is a huge scrubbing of that. Our setup is right here in the National Forest where we're always interacting with the public. And when people come by, they ask us all the time, what are you doing and what are you learning? Because some of our equipment is kind of crazy looking, um, almost Ghostbuster-ish when you see the leaf level measurements we're making. And when we talk about how we have this equipment that's you know, taking the pulse of our backyard, our, our forest here in the Catalinas, they really get intrigued. You know, what, what, what is that plant doing? Why is that plant so small? Um, why are there so many little plants here but bigger plants over there? There's actually a lot of intrigue in the public, way more than you know, we had originally presumed. And that's one thing is we're putting, we're putting some numbers to the questions that people are asking. I love working outside. Uh, I think it is really the only thing that uh, I require of myself in, in my job and what I do on a daily basis. And if we go into a future that's going to have warmer conditions and more periods of drought, it could really change how plants migrate up and down elevational gradients. And we can study all of that right here in our one continuous elevational gradient.